of a schedule rolls on for Syracuse women's lacrosse as the Orange welcome another top 10 team and a familiar foe inside the Carrier Dome. It's number four Syracuse and number six Loyola. And with that, we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Hello, everyone. Alongside all-time Syracuse great Alyssa Murray Cometti, I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. And Alyssa, both of these two teams playing some of their best lacrosse right now, coming off some big-time wins. They are, and it's going to be a great matchup. Loyola is really balanced, and Syracuse has an explosive offense. So this is going to be a great great game. Well, you mentioned those 9-0 and Greyhounds out of the Patriot League, and no matter where you look, attack, midfield, defense, you name it, preseason awards everywhere for Loyola. Livy Rosenzweig is one of the best ever to play at Loyola. Same with Katie Detweiler. They are both going to have a, have to have a great game to beat Syracuse. You look at the flip side, and we know all about how loaded the orange attack is, but in particular, as of late, it's been a sister duo getting the job done. The Tyrells have been unbelievable in the last few games. Meg, always with her lacrosse IQ that is on point, she makes great decisions, and Emma Tyrell pushes the fast break so well right off the draw. Emma Tyrell, who really stepped up big time last year in her sophomore year, and has taken some tremendous strides as a junior this year alongside her sister, Megan. Emma setting a career high in points last time out against Temple. And if Loyola wants any shot at containing Syracuse and knocking off the upset today, they're gonna need to make sure they mark not one, but two Tyrells every time on defense. But for the Orange, they'll be without one of their sure things today. No Meg Carney in the lineup. Alyssa, day to day with a lower body injury. How is that going to impact Kayla Trainer's squad this afternoon? They will definitely need someone to step up. Look for players like Olivia Adamson, Jenny Markey to have a little bit more time with the ball in their stick in order to make up for that loss. Carney, of course, part of just a lethal Syracuse attack. We already mentioned both Tyrells. Emily Harris Chuck right up there as well. A Syracuse team that has eight and two on the year and has not lost a game yet inside the friendly confines of the Carrier Dome. A perfect five and zero oh home record. And you compare that against an undefeated Greyhounds team. And we got a good one on hand here today. Opening draw control is secured by the Greyhounds. So Loyola in their traveling green jerseys will have a chance to strike first. A Greyhounds team coming off just a dominating win last time out over Boston University. A 23 to five victory. Really having their way with BU and that's been the case for Loyola so often this year, Alyssa. Loyola has been off to a great start. They had a great win uh, against number 10, Princeton. Quick shot and a quick score. How about that? The Greyhound strike first, and who else but Livy Rosenzweig. A great way for Livy Rosenzweig to get started. A nice little rocker back and forth over the top of Sarah Cooper to the back pipe. That's a great finish for her. Well, she's the all-time points leader for the Greyhounds coming into today at 363, make it 364 now. And Alyssa, you get the feeling that if she's on her A game, this is gonna be a tough offense to contain for Syracuse. Definitely, she made Sarah Cooper work for that possession for sure, and they needed to send a slide earlier on that. Cooper, of course, the preseason Tororaton watch list type defender who is really the anchor of this Syracuse defense. But if she continues to draw that matchup, could be a long day for number 26 in orange and white. So back to the draw control circle we go, a place where both of these teams really excel. Each team averaging over 16 draw controls per game. And Syracuse will have their first chance on that. This is Jenny Markey. Now Emily Harris Chuck probing, trying to find an open cutter and says, I'm gonna keep this myself. 
I like to see that Syracuse is really taking their time here. Just because they went down early doesn't mean they need to rush the next shot. 22 to seven win last time out for the Orange over Temple. Both Tyrell sisters notching five goals, combining for 18 points. And a homecoming for Syracuse after a brief three game road stint where they went two and one. Harris Chuck with defenders draped all over her, loses possession and a scrum for the loose ball. Still on the doorstep, Loyola's got it. Look at the energy on the Loyola bench right now. Plays like that is what's gonna fuel them this game. Emily Harris Chuck rolled, uh, hung her stick a little bit there. Costly turnover for Syracuse. Greyhounds working quickly in transition. They like to play fast paced, says head coach Jen Adams. One of the greatest women's lacrosse players of all time. Miss Q there though, and the Greyhounds will have to reset. Adams 14th season at the helm. A 179 and 69 career record as Kimber Howard stonewalls the Loyola attacker. Howard has stepped up big time in net over the past couple weeks. It was a bit of a goalie competition to open the year for the Qs with Howard, the UNC transfer, and Delaney Schweitzer. These two teams familiar though. They squared up two times last year to open the season and then again in the NCAA tournament. Syracuse took them both with relative ease, holding Livy Rosenzweig scoreless in both of those games. That's a formula for success that Gary Gate was able to execute at the helm last year, and Kayla Trainer will attempt to do the same. Well, she's already got one tonight, yeah, so hopefully that. they can stop her there. <laughs> Syracuse trying to set up shop on the weave with Sam Swart, but a whistle against the Orange will award the Greyhounds possession and some freneticness early for the Qs. Looked like that was a moving pick. I uh, would have to see a replay, but it looked like the player that was cutting underneath just bumped the on-ball defender a little bit, and you have to be stationary uh, and set it off of her. Chase Boyle, the midi, setting up shop now for Loyola in the offensive zone. It's a Greyhounds team that returns so many cast of characters. Senior leadership in understatement. Not a lot of newbies on the number six team in the nation. Sydney Black is not one of them as she controls. Sophomore who was just added to the Tawaraton watch list. It's really a pick your poison approach defensively, no matter who's got the ball. But an early miscue there as Hallie Simpkins secures for the orange. And now Sam Swart trying to get up the field quickly. Officials say not so fast as you see Kayla Trainer. One of the best to ever don the orange and white. Well, Alyssa, you had the pleasure of playing with for a number of years. What sort of characteristics out of Kayla have you seen her translate over from her playing career to her coaching career? Kayla is one of the hardest workers that I've ever played with. She, the amount of time that she puts in outside of practice, outside of games is unmatched. And I think her devotion to the team well, is obvious for her players. And if that's her coach, you want to match that. Well, her offense struggling right now over four and a half minutes in and still a goose egg up on the board for Syracuse. Another nice save made by Caitlin Larson. For a single save in the NCAA tournament game against Syracuse last year. 14 goals allowed. She was actually pulled in the second half of that game. Early, that way she can keep her confidence up. Jillian Wilson, senior midi for Loyola, first team all Patriot League last year. It's a Greyhound squad that just ranks in the accolades and for good reason. Nothing on that right alley though and a pass to the slot wasn't there. Loose ball and Loyola is closest to it courtesy of Jillian Wilson. She leads the team in ground balls with 16 coming into today. A quick first step from Wilson as now it's Rosenzweig trying to create the separation. Howard's on it. Awareness from the Syracuse goalie and Loyola walks away from that possession, scratching their heads. Good to see Howard getting started early. 
I'd like to see Cooper put a little bit more pressure on uh, Rosenzweig earlier. That way she can't feed and have her hands free. Our engine transition, this is Natalie Smith, finds Emma Tyrell into the slot, but the shot well high. Well, you saw Natalie Smith igniting the offense. A career high in points last time out for her with three. She netted two goals, and she's got points in each of the last four games for Syracuse. One of those role players that Coach Kayla Trainer told us has really stepped up big time alongside the likes of Jenny Markey, Maddie Baxter, and with no Megan Carney today, that's gonna be even more important. Definitely, and here's Kate, the matchup we've been looking for is Katie Detweiler against Meg Car uh, Tyrell. It's Meg Tyrell who has it right now with her stick off the left shoulder. Harris Chuck's got the one-on-one, -on -one, but she can't get the shot off. Loose ball secured by Harris Chuck. A brief cheer from the Loyola bench is quickly halted. Syracuse still on it. Tyrell into the slot, shoots another save made. The Orange can't figure it out right now. Offensively still scoreless. Syracuse needs to take a little bit more time when they're taking a shot. That was a little rushed by Emma Tyrell there. She could have shot with her left hand, had her hands free a little bit better than how she did with her right hand. Whistle against Syracuse as Loyola will keep and look to set up in the offensive zone. They do so with Georgia Latch, standout freshman, coming off back-to-back six-point performances. The Australian, you mentioned not a ton of underclassmen who stand out. Certainly a veteran Loyola squad for head coach Jen Adams, but Georgia Latch, certainly the underclassman that pops off the page at you the most. With 14 goals, she's one of three on the free position. Not the most ideal angle here, so we'll see if she tries to make it two for four. Instead, she's gonna give it off and let the offense reset. Syracuse defense holding true right now in a man-to-man. -man. We've seen them switch between one-on-one -on -one and a zone approach. Early in the season, more zone. As of recently, more man. Sydney Black trying to put a couple of shimmies on her defender, Bianca Chevry, but it wasn't there. 25 on the shot clock for the Greyhounds. Rosen's wide. Leading scorer backs down her defender. That's great defense by Cooper, forcing her out down the alley. She shouldered her off, still has the matchup. Another pass goes to no one. Now recovered by Black. Seven on the shot clock. Greyhounds got to hurry. Hounding defense from Maddie Baxter. They're not going to get the shot off. Syracuse takes over, and now the Orange with speed. Katie Goodale quickly up the field. She takes a whack. That's a hard whistle, and that's going to be a yellow card there. So Syracuse will go on the woman up as the whistle goes against Georgia Latch, who Alyssa is an attacker, but that time trying to wreak some havoc defensively. Yeah, she went a little too hard on the ride. She was behind Goodell and just ran up her heels and had a little bit too dangerous of a check there. Well, it's a Syracuse team that averages nearly two woman up goals per game. A unit that Coach Kayla Trainer has really prided her team on. The Orange content to go around the horn with it here. Jalen Jimerson into the game now for Syracuse as well as Jenny Markey turns on the Jets. Savannah Schweitzer. Harris Chuck hollers out the orders from behind Cage. Still plenty of time on this woman up. And Alyssa Syracuse seeming content to just pass it around the horn. Yeah, they've been pulling it out. It looks like they're giving a little bit more action, but they're gonna need to make their passes a little tighter, dodge some players a little bit to make these defense uh, shifts a little bit more difficult. Harris Chuck bringing it in front, has the matchup she won, shoots another save made. Caitlin Larson, how do you do? What a first quarter for her so far. Syracuse can reset though with the luxury of a fresh shot clock. I'd like to see Emily Harris-Chuck be a little bit more patient with that. 
player up. You don't want to settle for a shot. You want it to be a layup. Quick shot from Adamson, hits the pipe. Moments hesitation there as it clanked that left post. Maybe she thought she had it. Either way, still nothing on the scoreboard for Syracuse, less than five to go and only 30 seconds on the woman up advantage. It is a stifling Loyola defense. They allow under nine goals per game, and they certainly look to be up to the task here. But can Syracuse get it going in transition? Sam Swart, full head of steam, shoots and scores. Orange tie it up, 1-1. 4.20 to go, first quarter. That transition game just can't be stopped for Syracuse. It took a little while. Loyola struck first, but thanks to Sam Swart, the Orange are on the board, all knotted up at one in the first quarter. Well, the defense has been the name of the game so far, almost 10 minutes without a goal, and Alyssa, both goalies look really sharp early. They do. Kimber Hauer, it's great for her to get started early as she develops into the Syracuse main goalie. Caitlin Larson is so established for Loyola. As, like we said, she had no saves last, last year in their last match. Having her start this way is great for the Greyhounds. Really two polar opposites when you think about the track records of the goalies. Larson, all the accolades, the grad student, Preseason Patriot League Goalie of the Year, and for good reason. For Syracuse, Kimber Howard transfers in from UNC after not necessarily seeing a ton of playing time down in Chapel Hill, but did back up the National Goalie of the Year in Taylor Moreno, and that expertise proving fruitful, and it's enabled her to grab the starting spot for Syracuse. Kimber Howard could have been the second best goalie in the country last year, and we just never got to see her play. Well, both goalies certainly appear to be on their A game here in the first quarter. Loyola controls another draw and will have a chance to hop out to yet another lead. Syracuse just struck back in transition off of a Sam Swart goal. You see the stark difference between the past few games, usually a Syracuse attack. The first quarter is where they do some of their best work. And then if anything, Alyssa, perhaps take their foot off the gas pedal as time goes on. Not the case here. I think they were anticipating a game like this. Loyola's defense is really, really strong. So they're just gonna have to keep at it and keep plugging away. The Syracuse defense trying to replicate what Loyola has done defensively thus far. It's a younger Syracuse defense. No more Kerry DeFleece, no more Ella Simpkins but still anchored by Sarah Cooper as there it was Bianca Chevry applying the pressure for the Cuse. Rosen's wide with Cooper on her. That's a matchup to watch. And that time, advantage Cooper. Here's Sydney Black going to work on Sam Swart. Can't get the shot off and instead dishes it off. Here's a pass towards the crease. Under 20 to go on the shot clock. The Syracuse defense doing a good job forcing Loyola to hold it deep into the shot clock. There's a cutter though, and a bouncer goes. Loyola back in the driver's seat. It's Ellie Krugel. She had two goals against Syracuse in the NCAA tournament last year, and she appears to have picked up right where she left off. A great cut and finish by Klugel. She got picked off a little bit by Cooper there, or rather uh, Tessa Cleary. But great finish, and Loyola's up. Well, Klugel is someone that is a captain for this Loyola team and maybe doesn't get the credit of a Rosenzweig or a Jillian Wilson, even a Sam Fiedler, but is right in the mix of the cast of characters that has made Loyola the Patriot League staple that they've been over the past few years. Five straight Patriot League tournament championships. Just haven't gotten the job done when it matters most in the NCAA tournament. Haven't been to a Final Four since 2003. Alyssa, despite consistently being towards the top of the rankings, but you talk about that Patriot League schedule, just don't see the same cream of the crop opponents, and that's hurt them late in seasons. 
it's really hard when you have to play in a in a league like the Patriot League where Loyola is head and shoulders typically above the rest and then have to go to the postseason where these teams like the ACC teams, the Big Ten teams are so seasoned and playing against each other. But this year they look strong and they feel ready to take the next step. And make no mistake, they have seen their fair share of ranked opponents. 4-0 and when they play a team with a number in front of its name. Of course, you talk about Syracuse, nine of the 11 teams that the Cues have seen so far this year have been ranked. Orange setting up the attack with Emma Tyrell, who takes a bit of a shot there towards the crease. Appears to be all good, though. And you've come to expect it for Syracuse, tough opponents and relentless defense. Ooh, that could have been a yellow card. Perhaps getting away with one there was the Loyola defense, but here's Tyrell off the free position where she is six of eight on the year. Career high in points last time out for Emma. The junior looking for more, and she's got it. We're all knotted up again. Emma Tyrell pulls Syracuse even with two minutes to go in quarter number one. Tyrell does a great job getting a good, fast start off the line, dragging the goalie off of her pipe and then sticking it right to that near post. Well, Syracuse has just been lethal from that free position spot. It almost seems like every time, whether it's Emma Tyrell, Emily Harris-Chuck, Meg Carney, who of course Syracuse is without, no Carney today, so they lose an offensive weapon. But one thing is clear, Alyssa, when they're on the free position, if you're a goalie, look out. I certainly want to, wouldn't want to be in there. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Loyola's controlled the draw three times today as opposed to Syracuse's one, and there's number four. That's an important stat to watch, as this game certainly has the feel for whichever team wins the possession battle could very well walk out of here with the victory. Definitely, and Rosenzweig has really had Mischewski's number there. Quick shot for Loyola, and they score again. Oh, anything you can do, I can do better. That was a very similar play from the last goal. Syracuse needs to get on the feeder's hands. It was Ellie Klugel again on that, and same exact play, almost identical from her last goal. Katie Goodall needs to get out on Georgia Latch's hands there. Make that a difficult feed to make. Klugel just tucked it in that near side. Minimal space to operate between the near post and Kimber Howard's frame, but Klugel pinpoint accuracy. So Loyola takes a one goal lead. These two teams trading punches here early. A very different narrative than what we saw when the two teams played twice last year and really in general. SU has won the past seven in the head-to-head -head department between these two. That was a nice win by Mischewski. Got it out over her shoulder. Megan Tyrell trying to draw the double team. Jenny Markey, the cutter. And the whistle comes in for a shooting space against Loyola. It seems like Meg Tyrell and Emma Tyrell just have a sense for each other there. That sisterly bond results in another free position for the Cuse, and it's Tyrell to keep. She shoots and goes bottom shelf. Second on the day for Tyrell, we're tied up. Another great start off the line for Tyrell. This time she went underneath Jillian Wilson and tucked it to the left side. Great shot selection. She's really doing a good job taking the goalie away from the pipe and putting it right back from where she just left. Well, maybe it's something about seeing that Greyhound's jersey that brings the best out of number 24. Tyrell had seven points against Loyola in the NCAA tournament last year. 
which was then a career high, but she broke that last time out against Temple with eight points. We mentioned it before, Alyssa, it seems like Emma Tyrell, every time she steps out on that field, just gets better and better. She came on so strong in the last half of last year and has kept raising the bar every single game, and she's so fun to watch. I love how tough she is, love how grit gritty she is. So here we are now at our third tie in the first quarter alone. Number four and number six in the country going at it. And so far, it's lived up to every bit of that matchup as Syracuse has the draw and another yellow card comes out against Loyola. Yeah, that's stick, stick to head contact on Natalie Smith there. She's gonna, they're gonna be a, a man down for the next two minutes. Goes against Maria Kiskis, grad student defender for Loyola, who doesn't see a ton of playing time, but checks in there and quickly has to revert back to the bench. So Syracuse goes back on the woman up. This possession, I'd like to see Syracuse take a step in and really draw the Loyola defenders. That way they can easily find the open person. Last possession when they were player up, they were too far out. Down on the doorstep, Tyrell gets it at the eight meter, orchestrating the offense, but her pass a little too much mustard on it. Jalen Jimerson's pass goes well high, and with under 20 seconds to go in the quarter, Syracuse is gonna have to hurry if they wanna look here. They turn it over though, so it doesn't look like that look will come. That's a tough break for Syracuse. They've gotta clean up possessions like that. Quickly in transition the other way, to no avail for Loyola. Brings us to the end of the first quarter. Orange and Greyhounds, trading punches so far. Syracuse had their way with Loyola twice last season, but through one quarter, we're all knotted up at three. Hey, between number four Syracuse, number six Loyola, all knotted up at three, and for the Greyhounds, Alyssa, we've mentioned so many options, such a deep team, and Jillian Wilson, certainly no outlier to that. Certainly, and Jen Adams talked to us about how they ask her to do it all for them, and she does. She just was added to the Twarton watch list, and she's earned that for sure. She leads the team in draw controls, and is just a gritty player from end to end. She puts the ball in the back of the net, but she's also a great defender. Coach Adams describing her as a true midi who can do it all. She said, we literally ask her to do everything. And against Syracuse, that's no small task. Defending, attacking, getting it done on the draw. But that's what Wilson has done through the first quarter. And we'll try to continue to do through the next three. Loyola winning at the draw control spot, four to three so far today. It was a bit lopsided early on in that first quarter, but Katie Mascheski hanging around for Syracuse. This time though, it's gonna go to the Greyhounds. Unlucky for Emma Tyrell, she had her stick right on that and just accidentally tripped up Detweiler. Orange relentless with the press making it difficult for Loyola to get into their offensive zone, but they eventually do with Emily Wills. Loyola is gonna kill this penalty. They've got 20 more seconds and no rush to get started. Certainly content to take their time with it. The penalty, which of course carried over from the end of quarter number one, moves into quarter number two, and with three seconds to go, now they're back to even strength. 
Kimber Hauer out from her crease. Thought about perhaps trying to swat down that pass, but quickly thought better of it. Rosenzweig concocting the play. Gets a tough shot off, but it's well wide. Cooper's doing a great job containing her after her getting beat that first, first goal. So far, she's done a good job on her. Under 10 to go on the shot clock. Greyhounds need to hurry. Pass to the middle, no one there, and it'll be a shot clock violation. So Loyola milking the clock comes back to bite them in that instance. Better job by Syracuse putting a little bit more pressure on the ball and making that backside cut that they keep sending not as open and difficult to hit. Jenny Markey's pass a bit too high for Emma Tyrell's liking. And now Rosenzweig with her foot on the gas pedal for Loyola, but she can't control. Still a loose ball and Katie Goodale corrects. A little sloppy getting started here and Coach Adams talked about how their team needs to focus on the discipline of the game and I'm sure this is part of what she's talking about. Both these teams clear at a really high rate, both up over 90%, uncharacteristic of either to struggle to get the ball up the field. Syracuse attack now without Megan Carney, one of the Orange's leading scorers sideline today. The day-to-day -day lower body injury, so the Orange without one of their lethal weapons. They still have plenty, and plenty of them out there on the field right now at that. Sam Swart gives off for Olivia Adamson, the standout freshman. Orange setting up that weave that we saw a lot last time out. Tyrell shot denied. Not a great shot selection by Tyrell. It's pretty unusual for her. Katie Detweiler recovered well coming off of the top, off the flip. Another big time save from Caitlin Larson. She's held teams to single digits in six of nine games this year. And with the way she's playing right now, don't be surprised if that stat continues and pads itself even more. Still early though, only middle stages second quarter. But both goalies impressing early. Quick shot comes from Wilson. Hauer meets her, still a loose ball. It's available. Swart all over the place for Syracuse. And the whistle goes against the orange, so a little too much aggressiveness there perhaps from Swart. Yeah, a little bit too out of control there. Tough when you get a stop to give it right back. Syracuse seems to be struggling, getting it, getting it out of their end. They need to focus on finishing the ground ball. When you get a stop, either get it back in Howard's crease or get the ground ball and out of trouble. So it will be a fresh 60 for Loyola. No yellow card comes out. So still even strength right now. Loyola trying to get in the driver's seat. Rosenzweig tried to find a cutter, wasn't there. Not the first time today, Alyssa, that we've seen a Loyola player lead a cutter a bit too much. They've been try looking for those cutters from the top a lot. That's their game. Libby Rosenzweig is a great feeder. She plays that, uh, that right behind the cage and they're going to need to tighten up on the cutters. That's a little too close. If that passes on the money, that's a goal. Well, they had another prime opportunity there. But they keep possession after a brief loose ball. And now a fresh 90 for Loyola to work with. Controlling the possession. We've spoken about how important it is to cash in, not just at the draw control, but prioritize possession when you have it. It's hard to play defense for a long period of time. Quick pass to the crease, a quick shot, Jillian Wilson goes top shelf.
it's difficult to get a stop when you're on defense for this long and Syracuse couldn't make it work. Jillian Wilson did a great job getting it inside and shooting over the top of the defender. Looked like she almost hit Cooper in the head, but she didn't and was able to finish. Sarah Cooper, Tessie Query draped all over Jillian Wilson. And she muscled that shot off and it puts Loyola back in control. Four to three, first tally of quarter number two. Over five minutes in. And it's Loyola who punches first as they take the lead yet again. Nine and oh, undefeated Greyhound squad. First nine and oh start since 2011. Loyola was undefeated through the first 12 games of the season that year when they went on to win their first ever Big East tournament. These two teams, of course, date back to the Big East days when they were in the same conference. That was my freshman year, and I can confirm they were good. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about the Greyhounds that made them so tough specifically? They had a lot of threats similar to this year. Grace Griffin, Abby Rafis, Stephen Rafis, his sister, just really well balanced. They're a well coached team. The coaches have been here for so many years. You can tell that it's a great place to play. Uh, when you have assistants that stick around for as long as Caroline Hager and Dana Dobby have, you know it's a good environment. And they're looking for more, courtesy of Jillian Wilson yet again. She finds a wide open Sydney Black who gets the pass off and takes a hit and hits the turf in the process. So a whistle against Syracuse. That's just the kind of attention that Sydney Black commands. She is so smooth. I love to watch her play. Nice little juke there and just too much of an extension on that cross check by Simpkins. Sarah Cooper still on the defensive effort for Syracuse. Boy, she's been everywhere throughout this first half, drawing all the tough matchups. As now it's Ellie Klugel on that right side, looking to make a move on her defender, gets the first step and punches it in. Two goal lead for the Greyhounds. It's a hat trick for Ellie Klugel and it's a two goal lead for the Greyhounds Loyola all over Syracuse right now. Syracuse by two, and Ellie Klugel already has got a hat trick to her name. She's done a great job. She's been a cutter. She just was a dodger. Three goals for Ellie Klugel. She's off to a great start. Grad student Mitty that has just gotten better and better every year for head coach Jen Adams. And efficiency certainly is something that you can use to describe Klugel. Every shot she's taken has found its way to the back of the net. Alyssa, is that just something from a momentum standpoint? If you're an attacker, if you're an offensive player, if you're feeling it in your first couple fall, you just keep letting them rip? My godfather told me, keep shooting no matter what. <laughs> and so that's what she's doing. And you know, with coaches like Dana and Jen, They've figured out how to score in their careers and they know how to coach it. Syracuse seemingly hasn't secured a draw in quite some time now, but they do have this one and can at least patch the wounds a little bit right now and control the possession, if not anything else. Orange have yet to score here in this second quarter. Momentum certainly on Loyola's side right now. A Syracuse team that hasn't faced much adversity all year, particularly in this building. A perfect home record. Emma Tyrell finds her sister! Exclamation point for Megan. That was amazing. <laughs> Threading the needle. What an unbelievable pass this was. A nice little juke to the outside, threading the needle, hitting her sister right on the money. 
That is such a high level play right there. A nice back door again, Stetweiler. Great play shot, great way to get Tyrell going. It almost seems like the best part about that sequence, and listen, correct me if I'm wrong here, a killer first step from Megan Tyrell to create the initial separation. Completely, and I can say that play exactly, I've seen Kayla Trainer do in that exact same spot a million times. Well, the Tyrell sisters have certainly kept opposing defenders up at night as far as the matchups that they're going to have to go through and worrying about Emma and Megan respectively. We mentioned the monster game they each had against Temple, both notching five goals and have showed up in the big moments as well. Sydney Black looks like she wants to work quickly though and tip momentum back in favor of the Greyhounds and make this a two goal game. Ellie Klugel already with the hat trick. Quick shot. Hauer meets her. Loyola on the recovery. Similar backdoor cut by Georgia Latch there. Latch, the Patriot League Rookie of the Week. As that time, Hauer snags it with the big spoon. And that was lucky because that pass was intended for Latch, who Syracuse left unattended right on the crease. So good play by Howard to save that one. It's hard to blame him. So many options for Loyola. You gotta leave somebody open sometimes. <laughs> and that time, Georgia Latch, the beneficiary, really with both of these teams. When you have so many consistent, reliable scorers, it's only a matter of time until one of them slips through the cracks unnoticed. It takes that much depth to break into the top 10 these days. It doesn't work if you just have one or two key players. You need that balance. Orange trailing by one as we approach halftime here. Only four goals on the day so far. A Syracuse team it has averaged nearly 20 over the past two. Swart tries that one from the near side. Another save made by Larson, number five on the day for the Loyola netminder. Sport forced the issue a little too much there. Shot it right at the goalie's stick. If it's not there, I'd like to see her just pull that one out and preserve the possession. Chase Boyle, reserve midi, with pace for the Greyhounds. Katie Goodale, the standout defender. Another quick shot comes. Hauer takes a second to get on it. She can't get there first. It was Loyola in pursuit, and they'll keep it. This is something that Syracuse is going to have to talk about at halftime. There have been multiple opportunities where they've gotten a stop and then given back a second possession. That time, Hauer pursuits it aggressively. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, so Sydney Black can just walk it over to think about giving it to a teammate, and now keeps it herself down that right alley. Bianca Chevry traveling with her. Great defense there by Cooper. Under 20 to go on the shot clock now. Syracuse defense holding true thus far. Here's a pass to the inside, trotting forward, no shot available, and with under 10, Behind the cage, Rosenzweig on Cooper, turns around, gets the shot off, it's wide, and that will be a shot clock violation. Loyola's been running a lot of the same offense. They alternate who's the feeder from the right side and send cuts from the top, and Syracuse is allowing that to happen. They need to really force the issue on the feeder and not let those passes be easy. Orange try to get a little tic-tac-toe going in transition. Tyrell keeping it herself. And now retreats a little bit and slows it up. Waits for the reinforcements. Emily Harris-Chuck with two goals last game for Syracuse. Seems like Harris-Chuck, Alyssa, has been content to not step back and be more of a distributor, but not pouring in the goals as consistently as we've seen throughout her SU tenure. 
she's been a little quiet this game. She ha had the couple strips early where the defender back checked her. I think she just needs to get rid of the ball a little sooner. She we've seen her shoot from the outside easily. As soon as she gets in her hands free, she needs to let it go. Tyrell unleashes another Larson save. Boy, six on the day for the Australian goalie. And she's kept Loyola in the driver's seat. A majority of these shots that Larson's getting a stick on are up high. I think Syracuse needs to change their levels when they're shooting. So with just over two to go on the game clock, Loyola, again, can try to make this a two-score game in a back-and-forth first half from the Carrier Dome. Syracuse trying to extend its win streak to three. An eight and two orange team that hopped up the rankings to number four this week after a tough loss to a Florida Gators team last week that Loyola defeated earlier in the year. That Quick was a shot tough on loss. Howard, not there. That was a tough loss for Syracuse. They did not play their best. Coach Trainer talked about it. It was a really hard road, uh, road trip for them, and they had a team meeting afterwards and felt really good about it. It was times like that. It's early in the season. You've got to bounce back, and it can be a silver lining good moment for the team. Maddie Baxter in transition, shoots and scores. Tie game. What a great moment for Maddie Baxter to step up. The sophomore, she got a little bit of playing time last year. She's getting more this year. Big goals like that, and look at that, it was low. And she's been playing some of her best lacrosse as of recently. Baxter with goals in four of the last five games. So now she's starting to emerge as another player that you just can't leave uncovered if you're an opposing defense. Definitely, and it's great to see her develop. She's playing for Team Canada this summer in the World Cup. She's really developed for Syracuse and is going to continue to do that, especially the more times that she can convert on big goal like that in games that really, really matter for Syracuse. Alyssa, we mentioned before the commonality that these two teams have had. Syracuse losing to Florida, Loyola taking down a ranked Gators squad. As a player, is that something that crosses your mind, that one degree of separation? Okay, we beat you, but they lost to them. Does that even cross your mind, or is it just one game at a time? I think if it's a blowout, then you're like, oh boy. But when the teams are so close together, you know, Loyola won by three, Syracuse lost by a few, but they walked away from that game knowing, okay, that was not our best. If they played their absolute best and still came short, came up short, then it's a little bit concerning. Knowing that you were not close to your best, it doesn't really say as much. Well, the Orange trying to enter the halftime break with all the momentum on their side, but Larson all over the place, but the bouncer on the second try goes. First lead of the day for the Qs at six to five. Meg Tyrell has to keep dodging hard like this. Only thing I would change is that initial shot, put it low, but she figured it out for the second time and got it around Larson. Meg Tyrell, leading goal scorer for Syracuse on the year. And we've mentioned how many options Syracuse has. But Alyssa, at this point in the year, we're past the halfway mark. I don't think it's any secret to say Meg Tyrell is the focal point of what SU is doing offensively this year. They want Tyrell to get her touches and be the quarterback of the offense. It really disrupts the flow, like I said earlier, when she's limited. It requires other players to step up who are less experienced. So the more she can get the ball in her stick and at least just draw a double team, starts offense for Syracuse. So two quick goals for Syracuse. Loyola will try to stop the bleeding with under 30 seconds to go in the half. And Emma Tyrell on the ride, vicious. She's gritty and she's tough. It, it's so fun to watch her play. 
Rock does not stop on the whistle, so Tyrell has to hurry. Pass down to the doorstep. Syracuse goal? No, they wave it off. Or do they? The Orange are huddling. They're gonna count it. It's seven of five Orange. Just like they drew it up. That's exactly what was the plan. I'm just kidding. A goal is a goal. Tipped off Harris Chuck's stick, went around Larson. Unlucky for Larson. Almost reminiscent of a ice hockey redirect, if you will. But hey, Syracuse will take it as Emily Harris Chuck gets credit for the tally. Great shot by her. I'm sure she practices those all the time. Well, she has a very, <laughs> she has a lot of really wild shots. I, I know it was maybe 2019. I'm really trying to think back, an outrageous goal against Boston College where she was basically field hockey shotted into the cage. So she is familiar with a goal like that. So it feels like Loyola has maybe played the better half so far. But as the timer expires in half number one, Syracuse rattles off a couple to take a 7-5 to five lead at the halftime break. And Loyola has yet to trail at the half so far this season. The 9-0 Greyhounds, but they're in a two-goal hole against Syracuse at the half. Number four, Syracuse leading number six, Loyola, seven to five at the break in the Carrier Dome as Syracuse looks to make it eight straight over Loyola dating back to 2013. Welcome into our new house studios for the ACC Network Extra Halftime Report with former Colgate women's lacrosse goalie Samantha Croston. I'm Cameron Ezer. Samantha, this is a Loyola team that has a bad taste in their mouth from a year ago. Outscored 38 to 14 in two games against Syracuse, but right now the Greyhounds holding their own. And they really are. I have to say they're holding their own. And normally at this point, Syracuse might be up 10 goals, 15 goals in some of their other games. But not this time around because Loyola's defense, the head of it, Caitlin Larson, stifling the Syracuse offense in some way. And Loyola's offense getting it done early. That was Livy Rosenzweig, the leading goal scorer for this Loyola team. But Syracuse would inch closer back into it 10 minutes into the first. The transition play of Sam Swart is so uncanny, she lefty cradled it in. And she is one of those players who is making a name for herself in between the 30s. That is where the real work is done. That is where you figure out what kind of person Sam Swart is because she is the one making all the plays. And Syracuse's offense, again, a couple different threats here. We see the same thing on Loyola's side. Yeah, Loyola's doing really well on the offensive end. Ellie Klugel has a first half hat trick, the first half trick of her season. But Syracuse, they close the half out on a 4 0 run, encapsulated by Megan Tyrell doing her little dancey dancey and passing it over a goal that's bounced in. This is a Syracuse team that is so good on the offensive side, a top 10 offense in the entire nation, Samantha. And you see in that last clip, it was just off of the stick of Emily. Harris, Chuck, you know that that's a goal that Caitlin Larson wants back, but a goal is a goal. From a micro view, Syracuse is leading Loyola 7-5 to five at the break, but we're going to go a bit more macro as Samantha's going to take you through her ACC storylines on the other side of the break here on the ACC Network Extra Halftime Report. In a top 10 matchup in the Dome, it's number four Syracuse that has the upper hand on number six Loyola. The Qs trying to improve to 6-0 and at home while Loyola looking to make it 10-0 and to start the season. Now, Loyola and Syracuse, we've talked about their performance in this game, but the ACC is a conference that is just absolutely outstanding in lacrosse, and we wanted to take a look at some other things going on around the conference. We begin with Jamie Ortega, who just joined Elite Company in the 400-point club. There are only five other people who have done it, and guess what? Jamie Ortega, she's played fewer games, 79, than any other player in the group, 
Happened two games ago at High Point. She is third on the list already, behind only Stony Brook's Kylie O. Miller and as well as Maryland player and Loyola head coach Jen Adams. She's doing a great job so far. You can see in some of these just her versatility in these clips. She is somebody who is able to just rip it from the outside as well as from the inside. And she returned to UNC for her COVID granted fifth year. So this is someone who is only going to get one more shot at UNC, but it has been a historic season so far. And she is bound to break more records as we continue into the rest of this season. But guess what? That is not the only thing we're looking at today. We're also looking at Pitt's inaugural season. UNC is a team that has been here for a while, but Pitt, they just joined one of the best conferences in all of women's lacrosse. And the reason why they're having such great success, there are a couple of them. The first look, they've had a couple of notable losses. They lost to Virginia Tech 12 to 11 in overtime. They lost to number seven Duke and Durham. But guess what? Boston College, who is the number two ranked team in the entire country, they were tied with them Head at, at halftime. Head coach Emily Boissano says their trademark is their grit their toughness, their fighters, and they also had 15 players out of the transfer portal. They are getting people from Syracuse, from Florida, from Virginia Tech, even from Elon. So they took all these players, put them together, and are hoping to have a memorable season. But lastly, we have to look at some of the ACC to Wharton Award watch list players. And there is one of those players from Pitt, but we also see people from Boston College, from UNC, and of course from Syracuse. A couple of people I have my eye on, Charlotte North, the attacker from Boston College. If you don't know that name by now, you have to start watching some more women's lacrosse. She won the Tawarton Award last year, leads the country in goals per game and free position goals per game. Easy to see when you see the way she rips that from the eight. I'm also having my eye on Maddie Jenner from Duke. She's an attacker, but she's leading the nation in draw controls right now. 154, it is 50 more draw controls than the person ranked second on the list. So a historic season for her. And lastly, I am looking at Taylor Moreno, the goalkeeper from UNC. Again, having a historic season and they have one of the best scoring defenses in the entire country. They just beat Boston College. Definitely a statement win. So lots to come for the UNC team. Coming up next, we're going to have a look at a couple of different players, a couple of different stat lines and try and figure out who is going to win this game. For Syracuse and number six Loyola. It's not a stalemate, but it feels like it's Syracuse. Leads Loyola seven to five in the Carrier Dome in this matchup. With Colgate, with former Colgate lacrosse goalie Samantha Croston, I'm Cameron Izair. <laughs> now, there are a few names to highlight, but one in particular that's been phenomenal for Syracuse in this game and this season so far is Emma Tyrell. How about it? Four points, three goals? That's phenomenal. I mean, honestly, that is just another normal day. For this, for Emma Tyrell, she's been doing such a great job. Five goals last game, and you know what? She might even just surpass that this time around. But somehow, she's such a selfless player, and at the same time, she is able to, she's getting points, she's a goal scorer, she's an assister. She really is a triple threat in that sense. Emma Tyrell, third on this team in points, which is saying a lot because this is a Syracuse team that has five players that score more than 10 or, 10 or more goals a game and six players that have 10 or more points per game. So Emma Tyrell has been great for the Syracuse team as the Orange lead the Greyhounds seven to five. Another player to point out, Caitlin Larson in net. Okay, I know you were a goalie in your own right, and Caitlin Larson for Loyola has been great with seven saves. Look, I was a goalie, but I was no Caitlin Larson. <laughs> Caitlin Larson has been doing such a great job this season. She really is the anchor on that Loyola defense. She's doing a great job in this first half, getting the saves that count, especially in that earlier part of the first half. She really made a couple of doorstop saves. And guess what? For a team like Syracuse, really any team, that stifles you a little bit, not only physically, but it also does become a mental challenge. Larson is fifth in the country in goals against average, only giving up under nine. This is a Syracuse team that has never scored under 10 goals this season. So 
So it's a stout Syracuse offense against a Loyola defense that's getting it done quick. What are you looking for on the Syracuse offensive side to maybe pull it out or Loyola's defense? I think that they have to stick to their weave and they have to do quick passes. Hey, that, that's the key. That's the key from Samantha Croston, but we're not here to tell you everything that's going to happen. That's Johnny Gadamowitz and Alyssa Murray Cometti's job. We'll send it back out to the Carrier Dome as Syracuse leads Loyola 7-5. Two-goal lead for Syracuse as we welcome you back inside the Carrier Dome. Johnny Gadamowitz, Alyssa murray Cometti on hand. Alyssa, we saw the Orange really strike back in the closing stages of that second quarter. They take a two-goal lead in the, into the break against a Loyola squad that has never trailed at the half all year. What do the Greyhounds need to change up if they want to claw their way back into this? Loyola needs to take a little bit better care of the ball. If you'll notice the turnovers, they have five more than Syracuse, and it's been costly. Um, they've got to continue to work their offense. They're getting good looks. Ellie Klugel has been great. I think you've got to start getting Livy Rosenzweig and Georgia Latch a little bit more ball time, a little bit more dodging, give them more shot opportunities. Well, for all the question marks that this Syracuse defense Drew coming into the season. You talk about some of the younger, more inexperienced players. Katie Goodale, Hallie Simpkins, Bianca Chevry, replacing the likes of Terry DeFleece, Ella Simpkins, who had been SU staples on that back line over the past couple of years. Safe to say that this younger defense has impressed through more than half of the regular season so far. They've done a great job, and Kimber Hauer is filling the shoes of Asa Goldstock as well. And it's going to take time for them to develop. We didn't think that they would uh, figure it out right away, and now we're halfway through and they're starting to get their footing. Worth noting, again, if you're just joining us, no Megan Carney today for Syracuse, one of the Orange's leading goal scorers, but it hasn't mattered all too much. Whistle against Loyola allows Syracuse to set up in the offensive zone for the first time here in half number two with a 7-5 lead on the number six team in the country. Jenny Markey seeing more and more run now for Syracuse. Orange into the weave. Savannah Schweitzer right down the lane. Finds Adamson. Freshman gives off for Harris Chuck, the grad student. Keeps it in her stick. Harris Chuck, who had that crazy tap in goal in the closing stages of the second quarter. Sam Swart, couple of long strides, shots just wide. Good job by Loyola getting a stick on that shot there. Thought Sam Swart had a good alley to goal, but they collapsed very quickly. Under 30 to go on the shot clock for Syracuse. Meg Tyrell finds her sister Emma. There's that shooting space boy. Emma Tyrell, so good at drawing that shooting space violation. That was all Meg Tyrell to start though. She drew the slide and then found the open girl to turn and get the shooting space. Three goals on the day already for Tyrell. Thinking number four, but a whistle comes. This is a rule change that I hope to see. It was a false start on the defender, and now the de defense will just fill in the adjacent hash. I think that it should be open, or left open, when they false start like that, since it's a turnover for the offense if she false starts. But I don't make the rules. Tyrell from the eight meter, just dumps it in. Number four on the day for Emma. Three goals, Syracuse lead. Tyrell's been great from the eight meter, cutting off the adjacent player, getting her on her back, shooting low. Have to imagine that's something that they've talked about at halftime. Well, after she set a career high in points last time out, Alyssa, safe to say Emma Tyrell has found her stride? She's figured it out once again. Syracuse with its largest lead of the day. They've put up an eight spot already against a Loyola team that allows only nine per game. We're barely underway here in half number two. Already almost hitting that total.
Great draw by Tyrell there. Started off the circle and ran onto it, timed it perfectly. Almost seems like every offensive possession, if Emma Tyrell's not the one bringing it up for Syracuse, she's controlling it for a decent amount of time. She's come on so strong and in the last year and a half just evolved into one of the best players in the country. Swart at the 12 meter fan. Schweitzer and Adamson out there getting some run now for Syracuse. Adamson loses the ball. Too much contact though. That was a bit of, re of a reckless check by Wilson towards her face. Let's see how Adamson does here. Three for four on the free position this year is the freshman. Looking for one more, well too high. Syracuse was closest to it, so they'll keep. In the stick of who else but Emma Tyrell finds her sister, now down low. Harris Chuck can't finish. Not sure if Harris Chuck herself got a stick on that or if Caitlin Larson just swooped it out of midair. I think that one went right through. A little bit of a force there by Meg Tyrell. I liked the idea of leading her, but that pass has got to be perfect if you want that to work out. Syracuse has prioritized possession today. Orange not turning the ball over too often, only six times compared to the Greyhounds 10. But now three minutes in, Loyola will have its first chance to punch here in half number two. Kimber Hauer with a stellar half number one. Five saves in that first half. Sam Fiedler trying to put the moves on her defender. Georgia Latch orchestrating from behind Cage. Now brings it in front. Pounding defense from Katie Gooden. Under 25 to go on the shot clock. Black rips a shot and scores. Loyola cuts it to two. She's fired up. A great move by Sydney Black there. Started right at the center hash. A great powerful shot to the left pipe. Nice little juke to the inside. Catch Simpkins taking a step back and got her hands free for an awesome shot. She's fired up right now. Well, Sydney Black was forced to leave the game against Florida last week. Had to leave early with an injury. Missed the game against Lehigh right after that, but is fully healthy, is back, ready to go. Fresh added to the Tawaratan watch list. And for good reason. She's awesome. She was huge in their win against Princeton late. Had an unbelievable no-look feed. It was a highlight reel. And that Princeton game, they were bracing the conditions. <laughs> Raining cats and dogs. How was, tough is that for you uh, as a former player going into a game? Obviously, Syracuse doesn't have to deal with it all too much. But how much does weather play a factor in games like that? A game like that, it'll make things sloppy. And it was. I mean, it, Coach Adams talked about it. There was a lot of turnovers on both sides. Probably wasn't the cleanest game for either team. And they gutted out a good win. One of four ranked wins for the Greyhounds this year, and maybe their biggest. As a Syracuse miscue results in a loose ball, Sarah Cooper in on the play for Syracuse. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Georgia Latch. Good job by Goodout keeping that alive, though. She didn't come up with the ground ball, but she knocked that away from Loyola. Goodell leads the team in cause turnovers and ground balls. A defensive bright spot. Harris Chuck into the slot, lost it for a moment, tries to regather. She's bailed out by her teammate Maddie Baxter, but Baxter can't keep it. Harris Chuck is forcing the issue a little too much there. She's starting to drop her stick, trying to get her hands free. I don't think it's there at that time. I think she needs to wait for a better chance. Nearing 20 to go on the shot clock. 
Two goal lead for the Orange, down towards the crease. Couple of players hit the deck. It's getting pretty chippy out there. Looks like we're gonna get another eight meter. These are two teams that don't like each other a whole lot. They've met every year since all the way back since 2003, barring 2020 in the shortened season because of the pandemic. Syracuse took him down twice last year. A two goal lead right now. And you see that lethal wind up from Harris Chuck. Now it's Tyrell. Low to high shot is true. Super unselfish by Jimerson. Faking the shot, passing it to her left to Tyrell. Nice wind up shot. Bounced off Larson's shoulder. I think she thought Jimerson was gonna let that one fly. Caught her off guard with that pass. Goal number five of the day for Emma Tyrell. Alyssa, that's back-to-back -back contests with five goals for the junior. She's hard to stop. She's so athletic, she's fast, and she's extremely skilled. And make no mistake, this is a Loyola team with defenders certainly capable of minimizing the efforts of an Emma Tyrell or her sister Megan. Katie Detweiler, a second team All-American Patriot League Defender of the Year last year. But we haven't called Detweiler's name a ton today. The Orange have had their way against the All-American. Great draw there by Jillian Wilson. One-handed grab. So now a three-goal lead for SU in the middle stages of quarter number three. How important is it here for Loyola to make sure that they tack one on so that one doesn't become two, two doesn't become three for an SU run and so on? They want to keep getting really good looks on the cage. Even if it doesn't go in, at least if they're getting good looks, they're getting shots, they know they're still in the flow. Syracuse is a team that can score goals in bunches, and they know that coming in. They just need to ride the wave and get the ball in their direction a little bit more. And the Orange definitely scored in bunches to end the first half. Rosenzweig trying to create the separation. How about that? Textbook from Lizzie, Libby Rosenzweig. This has been such a great matchup to watch so far. Sarah Cooper's had her number a little bit, but she keeps working in. And Sarah Cooper just understeps a little bit, frees up Livy's right hand, roll over the top, drops her stick. Oh, Kimberly Hauer, I bet she wants that one back a little bit. A couple of emphatic hops there from Hauer, as if to say, I should have had that one. Yep. Can't stress enough, Rosenzweig in the two games against Syracuse last year, remember. This is one of the best players in all of collegiate lacrosse. Zero goals in each of those contests. She's only got two today, but you can certainly chalk this up as a revenge game for the fifth leading assister in NCAA history. She's broken multiple Loyola records, some Patriot League records. She is truly one of the all-time greats. Loyola with another chance here, Sydney Black. Get it to the stick of Rosenzweig, why not at this point? She's only scratched the surface of what she can do. Two goals today, zigzagging on Cooper, dumps down a shot and scores. There's the hat trick. One more for Loyola. Same thing as the last time. Sarah Cooper stepped too far underneath, allowed Libby Rosenzweig to come back over the top in the middle. She wants to keep her left foot higher up on her stick sides to deny that lane. But this time she caught her too far underneath, barreled in. Potentially, I would have to see it again. It may have been a charge. Fifth hat trick of the season for Rosenzweig. 32nd of her career. Let's see. Coming in. Oh, 
No, not a charge. Goodale's not set enough, I don't think. And interestingly enough, Alyssa, that's not really her game plan, Rosenzweig. She's not a player like an Emily Harris Chuck that just gets the ball and, and plows straight on Kate. She's a bit more crafty with it, but showing today that she can score no matter how she gets it done. Right, she's a veteran. She knows how to lead this team. If her team needs goals, she's gonna provide. So now Syracuse with a crucial win on the draw to stop the bleeding at least momentarily. Loyola's cut it to one. And Livy Rosenzweig, a big reason why. Orange on the other end now. Here's Harris Chuck darting ahead. Her shot, Syracuse answers. Off the back of number 51. Who else? Emily Harris Chuck makes this a two goal game. Loyola hanging around. We got a good one inside the dome. 10 to 8. Orange on top of the Greyhounds. Well, it took a little while for Livy Rosenzweig to have her fingerprints all over this one, but Alyssa's starting to have a big impact. She's doing a great job, and she's winning the match up to the top side on Sarah Cooper really well of late. So far, she's doing a great job of getting Loyola back in it. It's a Waratahn watch lister who's registered a point in all but one game in her Loyola career, an impact player since the day she stepped on campus in the Baltimore area. And someone who Coach Jen Adams describes as, when she plays in a comfortable way, our offense plays in a comfortable way. When she goes, we go. And she's single-handedly almost keeping the Greyhounds in this game right now. Long trickling ball on this particular draw. All the way near the end line. Loyola keeps it in though and they'll just play it back. Syracuse is doing a better job getting the ball away from Rosenzweig at the X. But that one I think went a little too far than Mischewski anticipated. Loyola just trying to get the ball in the attacking zone. They finally do. Here's Boyle, switches fields, but an errant feed and another costly turnover. Those are plays that Loyola needs to clean up to keep the momentum going in their direction. Not the formula right now for the Greyhounds. They've positioned themselves well within striking distance, but now it's Syracuse in transition. Baxter over to Adamson, now Tyrell. Couple of hop steps, gives it off for Harris Chuck, draws the double and lasers it in. A great dodge by Emily Harris Chuck, winning the ma uh, matchup against Jillian Wilson, getting top side, and a great shot. Like how she drops her stick here makes Larson come to the ground and then pop it up high. That's a much better option than just staying high to high, that, which was what they were doing a lot earlier. Second goal of the season for number 51. One of the all-time greats. Harris Chuck, of course, who missed all of last year. And there were questions about her return and if she would be able to continue to compete at that same level. But Alyssa, here we are more than halfway through the regular season. And one thing is clear, number 51 can get it done. She's done a great job easing her way back in. Had a slow start to the year. And when you're going like that and you're having a hard time, you can get frustrated, lose confidence, but she's really eased her way in and done a great job. In transition for Syracuse, Emma Tyrell appears to be holding that left arm and trots to the sideline. Right on the elbow, it looked like. 
That's a dangerous check. Right on the, oh, yep, right on the elbow. Looked like, that one certainly looked like it hurt. So Syracuse will be without five goal Emma Tyrell, at least for the time being. Again, no Megan Carney for Syracuse today as well. Natalie Smith for Syracuse. Couple of new faces out there with Adamson, Savannah Schweitzer. That's not a new face, Megan Tyrell. Harris Chuck setting the screen. Markey creates the separation, or Smith, excuse me, and loses control of the ball in the process, and a whistle goes against the orange. It looked like she fell right on top of the ball. An inadvertent cover, but a cover nonetheless. Tessa Query trots on the field for Syracuse. Tyrell. Relentless on the ride, but now we'll put on the brakes as Loyola brings it into the offensive zone with Rosen's wide. Three goal Syracuse lead. A Loyola attack that has remained consistent all game. They've certainly gone through some lows, but can flip that switch in an instant. Bianca Chevry providing the close defense. That's going to be a moving pick. We saw it in the first half against Syracuse. The Loyola player flipped it and then intentionally got in the way of the Syracuse defender. You're not allowed to do that. It is her responsibility to come underneath. If she's going to set a pick, she has to stop her feet and give the Syracuse defender time to run onto it. Sam Swart on the doorstep. You bet. Oh, what a find from Megan Tyrell. And Swart capitalizes. Great job by Tyrell getting Sam Sport involved. Nice little flip back. I love the creativity. Great finish by the lefty. Nice little jump shot there with some style. And Sport with the point. She knew it. <laughs> Megan Tyrell, the distributor. And Sam Sport drops the hammer. So Syracuse with a four goal lead on Loyola, third quarter here inside the dome. A Syracuse team, part of an ACC that is just loaded. No matter which way you look, and a couple of interesting and intriguing matchups to watch this weekend. Definitely, Syracuse versus Pitt should be interesting. Pitt played Boston College really closely for a lot of the game this weekend. They're not going to roll over against Syracuse. They're looking to upset someone, so that'll be an exciting one. Notre Dame needs a big win. North Carolina versus Notre Dame should be one to watch. When North Notre Dame is playing well, they are a very good team. They've just been a little inconsistent this year. Number one, UNC. Number two, Boston College. Both in action. Two teams that, Alyssa, we've mentioned, the first half of Syracuse's schedule loaded. Half number two, maybe not as much. However, you still got to go up against the number one team in the country in UNC and the number two team in the nation in the Eagles. Two teams that over the past year or so, Syracuse has gotten to know very well. They have played them a boatload of times, multiple times last year, and every game is tough. It's going to be the same story this year. Of course, Syracuse lost to UNC in the ACC title game last year. Lost to Boston College in the national title game last year. A big reason why they got that far. Emma Tyrell, who is just continuing an illustrious Syracuse career in her junior year now. But is on the sideline for the time being. With a compression sleeve, as you just saw. And a four-goal Syracuse lead. Loyola's already given up three more goals than their season average. And we're only in the middle stages of quarter number three. So it's been slow and steady, but this SU offense starting to break through. Draw controls are 12-10 in favor of Loyola, believe it or not, today. But the Greyhounds 
with a couple of costly turnovers. They win yet another. Sydney Black, though, struggling to see open turf ahead of her. Sam Swart having to help out on defense. And now Loyola puts on the brakes a little bit. Here's Georgia Latch. And the near side eight meter, Katie Goodale is all over her. Thought that was a good check. Unfortunate for Goodale. Goodale didn't like it one bit. Results in a Latch free position. She had one in the first half from a nearly identical spot and opted to just simply give it off. This time she wants the look, goes in, and hits the near pipe. Goodale all over it on the rebound, and she takes a hard shove in the process. But Latch comes up empty-handed. Another frustrating possession for the Greyhounds. I like how hard Latch was going to cage there, but when she wasn't able to get underneath the defender to her right, probably shouldn't, should have taken it to X and worked the Loyola offense. Well, it's Olivia Adamson who has it at X right now for Syracuse. Waiting for the help, and now it comes on that near side with Jalen Jimerson. Four goals, Syracuse lead, three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Number four, Orange, number six, Greyhounds. An undefeated Loyola team, but they're on the ropes here in the second half. Savannah Schweitzer atop the 12 meter. Shovels it off to a teammate in Olivia Adamson. She locates Jalen Jimerson at the eight meter. Now underhand scoop for Tyrell. Draws the double. Jenny Markey regathers. 25 to go on the shot clock for the Cutes. Harris Chuck says, I'm gonna do this myself. Couple of back pedals. Schweitzer in the slot. Some good ball movement right now for Syracuse, but they gotta hurry. Into the slot, loose ball, Larson's on it. Whistle comes, it's against Loyola. That's a tough break for Loyola. Like you said, good ball movement, a little bit of a force. Jenny Markey went for that ground ball and a held check on her stick in the eight meter. That's gonna award her, oh, Jalen Jimerson award her uh, free position. Still seven on the shot clock, so you have to think Jimerson is gonna go right on cage with this. Lethal wind up, her shot's wide, five to go, Syracuse is on it, they gotta hurry. Tyrell trotting up ahead, but the timer hits zero. So the orange come up empty-handed, and the lead stays at four. Unlucky, she just almost got rid of that in time, thought it was really close, but she didn't hit the crossbar in time enough for the shot clock to reset in favor of Syracuse. Jimerson not necessarily known as a goal scorer. Only two on the year. Loyola, who has had a tough time clearing today. Syracuse applying the pressure on the ride. Maybe a bit more so even than we've seen in games past, but now it is Loyola who brings it towards that left end. Here we go. Rosenzweig trotting down, goal line extended towards the cage. I don't love that Cooper is sitting back here. I'd like to see her make contact away from the H. Her heels are on the eight right now. Just gives a, Rosenzweig a lot of room to make a, uh, an impact. Seems like it's been the same core of players out there for nearly the entirety of the game, especially for this Loyola attack. Passing it around the 12 meter fan. Rosenzweig. Fishes it off, gets it right back. Draws the double. Now feeds to the left alley. Under 15 to go on the shot clock. Georgia Lash has to hurry. Here's Rosenzweig on the eight meter. Rips a shot and Hauer meets her. Kimber Hauer, a brick wall in net today for the Cuse. Good awareness there by Rosenzweig to get a shot on the cage. That time they beat Hauer though. 
12 to nine, the lead is cut to four as Libby Rosenzweig pots another. A great finish again by Klugel there. She's been great in the middle. She's wide open there, nice finish around Hauer. But this goal was really set up by Libby Rosenzweig having the awareness to get a shot on Cage. Hauer made a great save but wasn't able to keep it in her crease and Loyola capitalized on the rebound. That play entirely was kept alive by her. So it was Klugel who cleans up the mess. And that's her fourth of the day. Maybe not what you expected. Head coach Kayla Trainer and the scouting report on this Loyola Greyhounds team. You would think maybe it would be Rosenzweig who would have collected four goals at this point in time, but it's Klugel instead leading the charge offensively. Different look on the draw there. It was Chase Boyle taking the draw for Loyola. Didn't work out though for head coach Jen Adams. As Syracuse has it with Maddie Baxter and only 12 to work with. That's not gonna do them any favors. Not but a great decision by Baxter there. Detweiler was out really tightly on Tyrell. Caitlin Larson content to keep that ball in her stick. And her Greyhounds find themselves in a three goal hole at the end of quarter number three. Both teams trading punches. Fourth quarter action coming up next. Well, you knew it was coming and you still can't stop it. Megan and Emma Tyrell all over this one. They've done a great job once again. This is the third game straight where it feels like they've been finding each other time and time again. Great dodging by Megan Tyrell, sticking with her with difficult play. Emma Tyrell has capitalized off a bunch of eight meters and they're off and leading Syracuse in this game. They've combined for seven goals on a combined 14 shots, which is nothing new. This is a Syracuse team that is extremely efficient when it comes to the shots. Alyssa, more than half the shots the Orange take find their way into the back of the net. Efficiency is a motif when you look at this year's Orange squad. Well, when you look at the coaching staff and Kenzie Kent and Kayla Trainer, you have to imagine that those two have figured out how to score and can teach it too. So Syracuse with a three goal lead to begin quarter number four. And maybe that's the best way they put the hammer down here in the draw circle. Emma Tyrell fresh into the game after she was on the bench for a few minutes nursing that left arm. And you see her sporting that brace out there now. But out there nonetheless, as Syracuse has it with Olivia Adamson. And now there's Tyrell. Feed Emma, it's been the memo all day. Gets a screen from Savannah Schweitzer. Has a one-on-one -on -one matchup with her defender. Finds Adamson, the freshman, she lasers it in. Four goal lead for the Cuse. You love to see a player like Adamson starting to get in the flow, get into the rhythm of the offense, especially when Meg Carney is out. That's a great cut, an even better catch under pressure, and an even better finish finding the backside pipe. Well, Adamson might only be a freshman amongst an offense that is loaded with familiar faces that have junior, senior, grad students standing. But it's always comforting when you know you have those underclassmen that can get it done as well. And in speaking with Coach Trainer earlier this week, Alyssa, she told us, look, those role players, Adamson, Jenny Markey, Maddie Baxter, Savannah Schweitzer, just as crucial to what we're trying to create culture-wise. Completely. When it comes to championship weekend and the NCAA tournament, it's these awesome stories where you hear about these new players emerging, and that's typically coming from a role player. We know about the stars. So 
like there may have been a yellow card there. Looked like it got her up on the face. If it didn't, the ref can deem that that was dangerous. She had one hand in her stick, thought it was too dangerous of a check to just warrant a regular foul. So a two minute non-releasable against Loyola. So Syracuse will be on the woman up for a full 120 seconds. You mentioned Memorial Day weekend, Alyssa, and Syracuse trying to get back there after a trip to the national title game last year under head coach Gary Gate. Head coach Kayla Trainer saying that's the same goal. And it might be a new coaching staff and somewhat of a new cast of characters, but that mindset doesn't change. Harris Chuck on the doorstep. Draws Detweiler, the defender, who does a nice job parrying it away from Emily. But now Harris Chuck, the recovery. Feed for Adamson, oh! What a pretty move. Second in as many minutes for Olivia Adamson, and it's a five-goal Syracuse lead. Unselfish play, great ground ball by Harris Chuck. Seeing the 2v1, making the extra pass, and Adamson finishing again, looking confident as a freshman. She doesn't look like a freshman out there, that's for sure. Amongst the Harris Chucks, Tyrells, Carneys of the world, of course, no Megan Carney today, but Olivia Adamson, someone that has really fit very nicely right into this system. She's got great skills, great shooter, and when you have the players that you do on the offensive end drawing that much attention, it's players like, like her that can capitalize. A five goal Syracuse lead as the Orange have the Greyhounds right where they want them. With just over 13 to go here in the fourth. Syracuse squad that is enjoying playing inside the dome. And you look at the home stretch for the Orange. Not a lot of road games left whatsoever. Way more games here in the 315 than outside of it. In transition, Loyola working quickly. Howard with a nice leg save. Howard really picked up the slack of the defense in that instant. I thought Syracuse was fell asleep a little bit as Loyola had the quick start to that foul. Transition attack for Syracuse. Here's Baxter. Thought better of it. Jimerson couldn't haul in the pass. Looks like it's gonna be a card on Natalie Smith. I think chippy is certainly a word to describe how it's gotten here, particularly in half number two. So that was not, no stick to head contact. I think that was just a result of two Syracuse players getting in front. Unfortunate that it's a yellow card, but it was deemed too dangerous. So we just saw Syracuse go on the woman up and make the most of it. Now Loyola will have a similar chance to do so. First time on the woman up today for the Greyhounds. Alyssa, you get the sense if you're head coach Jen Adams, you can't leave all five goals here for the game's waning moments. You need to start to cut into this now. They're gonna really need to take advantage of this. They do have some ground to make up here and Time is ticking away. Still 12 minutes to go, but with the way the tables have turned in favor of Syracuse, Loyola needs to make something happen quickly. It's Rosenzweig. Finds Wilson. She draws the shooting space. Loyola did a great job there, working ball quickly. You saw a nice little dodge from Rosenzweig down low. Drew Simpkins down, and she was smart to hit it back high and draw that shooting space. So it'll be the Tawaratan watch list, senior midi from the eight meter. Trying to keep the Greyhounds in it. Already one goal today 
Howard says no to number two. Good stop by Howard. Syracuse did a good job getting it back into her crease, an adjustment from the first half where there were multiple rebounds back to Loyola. And with that denial, make it a new career high in saves for the Syracuse goalkeeper. Nine for Kimber Hauer. Her first season in orange, and she has looked poised all day. It's great for Kimber to really establish herself get some confidence as they head into a, the number one and number two teams that are looming at the end of the year. How important is that for a goalie? How, how much Does momentum matter more so for goalies than any other player on the field? You know, my best friend in college, and still, <laughs> uh, would be, was the goalie here. And she always said that it was a mental game. Half the battle is up here in their head. Syracuse certainly making life tough right now for Caitlin Larson, the Loyola goalie. Back to full strength are the Orange. Tyrell weaving in and out, but couldn't haul it in. Uncharacteristic drop there by Tyrell. Gotta wonder if it's the elbow that's bugging her. Sydney Black with a full head of steam. Rosenzweig on the doorstep. Loose ball, Loyola still controls. Frenetic pace, frenetic shot. Loyola score, number two for Jillian Wilson. Jillian Wilson just seemed like she was left unattended. Looks like two girls went low. And Wilson was left alone. That's a... That's an error on Syracuse for sure. No one within a good four or five yards of Wilson. Georgia Latch, the freshman, drew the double, and as a result, you had Wilson, who's a first team all Patriot League player, left completely unmarked. Seems like the whole offense is a Patriot League player on Loyola. You don't want to leave anyone open there. <laughs> Just about everyone has a Preseason award, a mid-season award to go along hand. The pride of the Patriot League are the Greyhounds. They're 59-0 in regular season games against Patriot League opponents dating all the way back to 2014. Can't get much more dominant than that. They've been solid, that's for sure. But struggling against a familiar ACC foe today. But not out of it just yet. Under 10 minutes to go and down by four. Plenty of room to operate up ahead for Chase Boyle. Boyle still with it now, bringing it all the way up for midfield. Now rotated back up top. Syracuse defense has been nothing short of a closed fist all day, if you will. But Loyola trying to penetrate it right now. Sydney Black on the far side. Wilson fresh off a goal. Not a lot of off-ball movement right now for the Greyhounds. With 35 to go. Now here comes Wilson. Simpkins defending, muscles off the shot and tucks it in bottom right corner. Hat trick for Jillian Wilson and a three goal game. Coach Adams says they ask her to do it all and she is doing it all. She took advantage of Simpkins not making contact inside the eight and just worked her further back and further back. Simpkins has to get a stick on her body sooner and dictate where she wants the attacker to go if she wants to stop uh, Wilson there. And a fist pump after that from Jillian Wilson who has her team within striking distance. And still plenty of time left. Kayla Trainer watching on. It's an orange squad that, for the most part, has been the better team today, but they've let the Greyhounds hang around. And Alyssa, Syracuse has not really been in this stage all too much. 
couple of close games in the fourth quarter. You think back, the Northwestern loss on the road earlier in the year, the Florida loss. But how much does that hurt Syracuse in a situation like this, knowing that a lot of their wins have just been so comfortable, to be quite frank? There have been games where they've struggled to maintain their lead, and Coach Trainer talked about how they need to put together a full 60 minutes. They've had a dip here, and it will be interesting to see how the rest of this game goes, if they're able to really wait out this run that Loyal is making and hold out the win. Well, it's the Greyhounds who control yet again. And a loud applause from the Loyola bench and the Loyola faithful on hand here inside the dome. It's Rosenzweig. Wants the matchup with Cooper. Falls to the ground, no whistle. Cooper all over it. Now the whistle comes, and it's against Sarah Cooper. It's a tough foul on Cooper. Looked like they were both going for the ball. Didn't have a great angle on that. So Rosenzweig will have the free position and simply gives it off. Here's Sam Fiedler. Down on the doorstep. Klugel shot, hit the pipe, rebound. Kimber Howard all the way out of our cage. Whistle against the orange. Loyola still with it. Prime opportunity. Chaos on the field. Good ale caused it to hit the deck. And now another whistle will haul play. Loyola is looking for a reset, and I think they are right on that one and hit the pipe. It should have been, it should not be at 17 seconds right now, so it should be interesting what time they have left. Might be the full 60. Well, Kimber Howard threw her arms up in the air, expressing frustration with the ruling. They've just put 60 on the shot clock. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, that's what we have, Coach. So we have a ball hitting the pipe. It went to 60. We, hold on one second, Coach. Let me do this. It went to 60. We're going to take off seven seconds, make it 53. So we have a pipe. We conferred on it. We had a pipe. We on for 15 seconds. We, we took off seven seconds. Seven? So the issue right now, trying to figure out when it should have reset. How much do you have to compensate back? Yeah, it, was, it seemed like the, it was winding down to just about seven seconds there, and they hadn't even brought it up past the 12 at that point. So it seems like there may have been a few more seconds that could have been taken off, but there's no instant replay. Chevry all over Fiedler, but a little too aggressive that time from the Syracuse defense. It's been a tenacious Syracuse defense, but these past few minutes here, certainly not afraid to get a little physical. Loyola has picked up their pace of attack in the last few minutes and it's definitely got Syracuse on their heels. They're getting a little emotional, a little frustrated. They've got to clean up the fouls, and Loyola has to keep pushing. Fiedler dragged in the free position. So another opportunity now for Loyola from the eight meter. Fiedler straight away. Moves in herself, shoots, it's wide. Boy, did Syracuse need that as Kimber Hauer saves another and says, all right, let's settle this down. That's a big stop for Hauer's confidence. We've said it all game. But that one was huge for her. Orange now certainly in no real hurry. And Kayla Trainer wants to talk things over. Three goal Syracuse lead. 6.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Boy, have we got a good one inside the Dome SU on top of Loyola by three. Four goals on the deck. And on six shots. She's been really, really efficient for Loyola and huge in this game. 
Syracuse with six different scorers, Loyola only with four different scores. So it's a Greyhounds team that maybe has been a little bit more predictable, I guess you could say, when they set up shop offensively. They've definitely found what works against the Syracuse defense and they've been going with it repeatedly. So SU in no real hurry here. With just over six to go. And a three goal lead. Tyrell finds her sister Megan. Plenty of separation for number 18. Draws the double team. Tyrell trying to make something happen on her own. Now has to backpedal. Finds Adamson. Adamson weaving around. Sam Swart at the eight meter. I like that Syracuse is taking a long possession here. Even if they don't score, there's a big chunk of time that just wound off the clock. Well, Olivia Adamson had all her momentum going to the left and got the shot off to the right. Not the best look we've seen from her today. But Syracuse does milk some clock in the process. 14-11 SU, just over five to go. Georgia Lash. Melissa, if you're the Syracuse defense right now, how do you make sure you stave off the potent Loyola attack? Syracuse has been getting in trouble because they've not made contact outside of the eight meter. They've rewarded Loyola with multiple eight, eight meter shots recently. So they're gonna need to make contact with their uh, off attacker earlier. Well, that was the formula that time around and it appeared to work out as Howie Simpkins has it after a brief Syracuse stop. And Simpkins will get it going all the way from the corner, she's hounded, double team. Escapes it though and locates Bianca Chevry, but a Loyola player, Sydney Black, tripped up. There was a foul before all that happened, so I think that's why it'll be Syracuse ball. Played all the way back to Kimber Hauer. Hauer who has assumed the starting goalie spot for Syracuse. Kayla Trainer saying, we changed our philosophy with the goalies. We started the year okay with the two goalie system. Now that's not the case. We want to ride one. And as of late, it's been Kimber. She showed up today and that save down there was just another one proving it. Under four to go. 20 on the shot clock. Savannah Schweitzer. Harris Chuck on the left alley. Gets the screen from Adamson. Harris Chuck shoots, it's wide. A missile from Harris Chuck. SU has to hurry on reset. Here's Tyrell. Down the left wing. Two on the shot clock. She doesn't know it. Shots wide. And the orange just took up a bit too much time there. But Alyssa, not necessarily the worst thing in the world. It's not. There's three minutes left. They're up three. They're gonna need to make Loyola work for this clear, limit their time down on offense with the shot clock now. SU keeping the pressure on on the ride. Loyola clears. And now you're really getting into crunch time if you're the Greyhounds. They're gonna have to work early in the shot clock. Looks like they're taking a timeout here. Jen Adams wants to talk things over and make sure that the Greyhounds know what their approach is offensively here. 2.34 to go. SU with the luxury of a three goal lead and a big reason why the play of their goalkeeper. Kimber Hauer has saved half of the shots that she's seen today. As a goalie, anytime you're 50% on the day, that's a good day for you. And Good for Kimber Hauer for stepping up in a big game. She's seen Loyola's shots really well. She's had a lot of eight meters, held strong. 
and done a great job on the clear, too. She's been a, a really, really calming force for the defense in the clear. You think back 10, 15 years ago, it was that 60% threshold that you put goalies at to say, wow, that's incredible. Nowadays, with the way that attackers and the offense has, has developed, that 50% mark is the cutoff to separate good from okay and, and, and great from good. And Howard has certainly done that today. Yeah, with the technology that the stick has made, the progress that it's made over the last handful of years, these shooters can shoot the ball so hard, the release is hard to read, and the skill level across the board has just skyrocketed because of it. So Loyola has its work cut out for them. The Greyhounds team that has not been handed a loss yet in 2022. They were only handed three losses in 2021. Two of them came against Syracuse to start the year and to bookend the year in the NCAA tournament right here inside the dome. You can chalk it up as a revenge game. You can chalk it up as one that Loyola had a little extra motivation coming into but the Orange have remained unfazed, and with 2.34 to go, they have the Greyhounds right where they want. They're gonna need to hold strong on defense, but Loyola has to work quickly. Well, it is Loyola who controls the ball right now. Just waiting the official signal to get things started. And Rosenzweig will do just that. 50 to go on the shot clock. It's Rosenzweig. Cooper draped all over, trying to take her all the way to the crease. It almost seems like the game plan is to draw contact. Get them to foul you. That is a big part of the game today. And unfortunately for Syracuse, that was not a great defensive slide. Rosenzweig is not a player that you're gonna easily strip the ball from. Go with your body and make her dodge around you or draw a charge. Rosenzweig already with a hat trick today. Straight away from that eight meter, crashing in on Cage. Gets the shot off, whistle comes. Perhaps some early movement against Syracuse. It looks like we'll do it again. I think Sarah Cooper's stick may have gone a, a little bit too close to her face there. So now Rosenzweig will do it again, slightly offset to the right. Keeps it herself, full steam ahead, shoots and scores. There's number four. We got a two goal game with two minutes to go. The veteran makes it happen for Loyola. What patience there. See all those fakes. That was a nifty little shot, getting her hands up and away. Pitching power almost out of the crease there. And Livy Rosenzweig is having quite a day. The Greyhounds are pumped. Loyola's all-time leader in points with 368. Back in her grad year for some unfinished business but still some work to be done. Her number six Greyhounds trailing the number four orange with 2.15 to go. This is a huge draw right here. This game pretty reminiscent of a nail biter of a Syracuse win a few weeks ago against Stony Brook in this building. A 12-11 Syracuse win that came down to the wire. Another top 10 matchup. Loose ball, rolling to the right, Loyola's on it. It's Jillian Wilson. The Greyhounds will have a chance to cut it to one. Wilson on Cooper, keeping it herself. It's off for Latch on the far side. Black straight away, receives the screen and uses it. Black's got the separation, Howard makes Big the save. save. Big save by Howard. Sydney Black tried to go five hole. Kipper Howard said no thanks, but an SU turnover. Loyola's got it back. It 
It appeared as if the initial ruling was that it was out of bounds and Loyola was closest to it. Yeah. Not sure if Sydney Black is going to be penalized for a foul here. Looks like they're talking it over. We had it, yes. Oh. Kimber Howard doing everything in her power to keep SU in the driver's seat. Great job holding the pipe there, watching the ball right in. I think the argument is that Syracuse called a timeout when Chevrolet had the ball at X, and they're claiming that they had the ball and should have been awarded the timeout before the turnover happened. So almost, that's the discussion. Almost one of those situations where you don't want to call the timeout, so you know, you, or, I'm sorry, I should say, you don't want to cough the ball up. So you know you have possession, and for Coach Kayla Trainer, the instant Syracuse is on it, she's calling that timeout. Right, let's take a look we, at the turnover. We, we called it when we had possession. So at some point here, Coach Trainer is arguing that she called a timeout. Definitely not a foul there on Black, just good defense. But the argument is that Trainer called a timeout when the ball was at X. Question. I heard the horn. But the horn came after when the ball was out of bounds. But during that, that, during that second that delay, yeah. when a coach is come together for a second, sure. and we'll come back to yeah. Yeah. Carol, yeah. one second, we're going to come together and come back to you. Yeah. So, so. So that horn doesn't come in until after the ball is out of Bianca Chevry's stick. Still looks like Syracuse may be the one celebrating, and Coach Adams doesn't look thrilled, so. Coach Trainer may have won the battle in this instance. Well, Coach Adams pleading her case, and she's got a case. So the official is saying that the horn was blown late. He heard trainer calling a timeout. There was a delay between both, which is why it'll be Syracuse's ball. It's frustrating for Loyola. So the ruling, Syracuse ball. Orange possession and head coach Jen Adams trying to squeeze every last ounce of explanation <laughs> out of the officials as she can, and for good reason. Late game, two goal contest, a controversial play like that one. You can't blame her, but it is Syracuse that will have it off of the reset. These coaches are competitors. They're the best to ever play between Trainer and Jen Adams. They are truly two of the GOATs, and their competitive nature is only natural in a scenario like that. They're fighting for their teams. Both of them have been in situations like this time and time again, whether it's as a player, whether it's as a coach, you name it. But this time it appears advantage Trainer Still a two-goal game with 90 seconds to go. And Syracuse has had all sorts of issues clearing today. None bigger than this. Loyola has the goalie out of the cage. They're in a full court press. But Natalie Smith is fast. Plenty of speed from Smith. She loses Ooh. it, though, and just flicks it towards any teammate she could find. 
Loyola takes over as the Greyhounds dodge a bullet. They'll have to get the ball up quickly. Schwartz, Tyrell, Adamson applying the pressure, but Loyola seamlessly moving into the attacking zone. Here's Sydney Black. Has a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Under 60 to go on the game clock. Cooper forces the loose ball. It will stay with the Greyhounds, though. Ellie Klugel with the ball in her stick. Already four goals today for Klugel. Cooper directly behind her, gives it off to the middle. Rosenzweig shot well high. Loyola closest to it, they'll keep. 35 to go on the ticker. Latch off the reset. Was working on Katie Goodale. And it appears as if they're gonna get Goodale for a shooting space. Free position for Latch with 28 to go. She might not have any other chance but to shoot it here. She'll need to get a shot off quickly. They've got to get enough time to go back to the draw. Not a very ideal angle, but not many choices right now for the Greyhounds. Latch dumps it off into the slot, and Wilson puts an exclamation point on it. One goal game with 24 to go. Jillian Wilson's fourth of the day, and the biggest one of the day for the Greyhounds. A heads up play by a freshman. What a great pass, great idea. Arms up and away to Jillian Wilson. Clutch. What a play. Loyola is still in this. The Greyhound shaved the deficit to one. And undoubtedly, the biggest draw of the game coming up. A 4 0 run for the undefeated number six team in the nation. Going toe to toe with the orange inside the dome. Both teams still have a timeout here. Have to imagine that we'll have at least one more timeout, no matter who wins it. Mischewski and Rosenzweig to do it again. Whistle comes. Cooper was on it initially, scooped up by Loyola. Rosenzweig moving up ahead, charges towards the crease, shot, it's in! Oh boy. Does it count is the question. No goal. No goal. One official signaled a charge. I don't know if he's gonna hit. Georgia Latch can't believe it. Jed Adams can't believe it. We got Rosenzweig coming down the middle. Katie Goodall. That's where the foul is. A charge, a charge against Rosenzweig. Oh. Offsetting fouls, it looks like. So at some point in that play, there were two fouls. We saw the one charge. Loyola still has the ball because of alternate possession. He, the officials didn't signal what the foul on Syracuse was, but we know at least one of them was a charge. So the orange, the perpetrators as well. So it will stay Greyhound ball with 12 to go. So the charge was apparent. St still not entirely clear as to what exactly went against Syracuse in that scenario. Yeah, I'm not sure. And leading up to the charge, there may have been some illegal checks, but I think that probably would have been signaled and moved on from at that point. Hard to tell what Syracuse was called for there. So Alyssa, your, your head coach, Jen Adams. It's a situation she's been in time and time again. What are you telling your players at this point with 12 to go down by one? 
Well, there's 12 seconds left. It'll be interesting to see where they go with it. We have Latch out there with the ball. They have to move quickly. You don't want to create offense for Loyola and slide early and leave someone open, but you can't just let Latch walk right in. She's a strong crease roll dodger, so you have to be ready to send that first slide. Most importantly, the second slide needs to be there to cover any open cutter for the adjacent Loyola player. It'll be Georgia Latch who gets it started for the Greyhounds with 12 seconds to go. Latch brings it out in front, has a cutter, pass was high, Syracuse is on it. Tessa Query up ahead, five to go. Clock hits triple zeros and Syracuse takes down Loyola and hands the Greyhounds their first loss of 2022. A thriller inside the dome that came down to quite literally the closing seconds. The Orange improved to 9-2 on the year, 6-0 inside the Dome, and take down Loyola 14-13. For all of us here at ACC Network Extra and Alyssa Murray-Cometti, I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. Syracuse takes it 14-13.